Hi everybody, I've been posting a few videos on custom fields in QuickBooks Online lately, and it dawned on me that I left a little tiny detail, which is what happens if you wanna create a profit and loss by that custom field. And it turns out the reason why I didn't explain that in either, either of the video, and there's a lot of comments asking for that, is because Intuit did not give us a path, did not give us a particular report that allows us to create a PNL by custom field. But there's a little bit of a workaround and I wanna show it to you because it gets, it gets us pretty close to where we want to be. So let's get started by just going into QuickBooks Online here. I'm gonna click on the gear menu. Then I'm gonna click on, we're gonna click right there where it says custom fields. So we're gonna get started by just opening the custom fields and getting sort of lay of the land of what the custom fields are. So in the custom fields in this particular file, and this is a QuickBooks Online Plus file, it's event name, sales rep, region, and marketing source. So let's say for the time being, this one here called sales rep is the one that we're gonna be focusing on. Let me edit this, and we have this enabled across all of our transactions. So uh, that custom field could be used in any of the transactions listed here, and we're basically keeping track of sales reps, Mary, John, and Hector, and that's it. So that's good enough. I'm also gonna add a little um, asterisk to the name of the, the name of the custom field. That just helps me find it much quicker in my reports when I start building the report. So let's click on save. So we're gonna start by, um, by showing you first what report we can use to view which transactions have custom field data on it. So let's go into reports, standard reports, and then we're gonna look for a transaction detail report. So transaction detail by date, it's probably the best one, the easiest one to use. And that's gonna give you essentially all the transactions across your, your QuickBooks file. I'm gonna click under columns, and then I'm gonna uh, open up or enable that sales rep field. So I remember I put a little asterisk on it, and that's why I did it, because it, it's just much easier to find. So we're gonna turn that on, and then we're gonna see somewhere here on the right, right side of the screen, we got sales rep, and then we have some transactions contain sales rep. Now I'll get rid of some of these fields, that way this is a lot smaller, a lot easier to read. So there we go, so we got date, transaction type, number, name, amount, sales rep. Good, okay, so we got a pretty pretty good, um, nice set of transactions here, and it looks like that's probably the whole universe of them, but we'll filter a little more. We're gonna go into filter, we're gonna open a sales rep, and then we're gonna select, um, let's just select this option here that says uh, not empty. And then it gives me all the transactions that contain a sales rep. I can go further and do all dates and then see every single transaction across my entire QuickBooks file that has a sales rep and it looks like it's only a few of the invoices. Okay, that's fine. Let's say, for example, that's accurate and that's all the invoices that get a sales rep. But I don't have any uh, bills per se, for example, so I can see my income side and the expense side. So then I can see it on a profit and loss report, right? Or, or what we're a workaround for a profit and loss report. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another filter here and then I'm gonna select um, transaction type. Where's my transaction type? It should be here somewhere. Transaction type, there we go. And then I'm gonna select bill, okay? And then right now I have it as sales rep not empty. We'll do sales rep is empty. So that it's gonna show me the opposite. It's gonna show me all the bills that are missing a sales rep, so easy. So I'm gonna go into each of these bills. So I'm gonna go to the first one and then I'll add a sales rep. So let's say the sales rep associated with a bill is Mary, and then we'll uh, save and close. Okay, if I hit refresh, I should see Mary in there at some point. Sometimes it takes a few minutes for it to load. Let's go to the next one. Let's do John, save and close. Let's do the next one. We'll do Mary, save and close. Actually, this shouldn't be here. None of them should be showing up because I have it in the is empty side. So let's just finish putting them in there. Let's say the sales rep on this one is John. Save and close. We'll go to the next one. Sales rep is Hector. Save and close. And then the last one, sales rep is Mary. Perfect. Okay. So if I refresh this report, um, nothing shows up because none of my bills are missing a sales rep. So if I change the filter from is empty to is not empty, then it's gonna show me all the bills that contain that. So that's beautiful. So now I have a, a bunch of invoices and a bunch of bills 
that, that all of them have a sales rep associated with it. So right down here in transaction type, I'm gonna change it to show invoices and bills. So both of them together. So now I got both of them. And then I can group them if I want to. So I go to group and I can group it by sales rep. And essentially I can see, uh, let's refresh this one more time. I can see that under Mary, I have a bunch of bills and a bunch of invoices. Unfortunately, all the amounts show us positive. So you really can't see a net, like a profitability type of thing. Um, we could do sort of a workaround for that. We can go into columns and instead of showing amount, we're going to show uh, debits and credit. So we're going to credit and we go into debit. And they may not be the traditional debit and credit side, but it'll be at least, you know, all the bills will be on one side and then all the income will be, all the invoice will be another side. So you can see kind of the expense side and the income side, right? So it's sort of a workaround, almost like a profit and loss by, um, by sales rep. It's not perfect, but it, it does give you uh, that ability to do that, okay? So that's how you can do that when you group it by sales rep. If you group it by transaction type, which is also an option, then you can expand, you can see all your bills and you can see all your invoices, but then um, this is, this includes all the sales reps put together. So you could run one more filter and then uh, do sales rep in this case uh, equals, and let's say just Hector. Now I see that my total invoices are uh, 1,566 and my total bills associated are 1,500. So you kind of sort of get kind of a PL. Again, not perfect, but it is sort of, uh, uh, close to what a PL would look like. Now let's go back to the report page and show you another sort of variation of this. Let's do transaction detail by account. So we're going to start with transaction detail by account. And then we're going to start building from here. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's just do all dates. And then here it says columns. I'm going to turn on debits and credits again, credit and then debit. I'll come down here and I'll turn off most of these things. That way we just have basic information, make it easier to read. Okay, there we go. Then under, um, we should look for a, a field called distribution account type. It's a really important one. Let's turn that one on and let's go into filter and let's do a distribution account type. Let's make it uh, equals and then we'll do all income and expenses. So it'll be sort of like narrowing this down to potentially a profit and loss. I'm gonna to go to view options here and click on collapse. So essentially we're gonna see all of our income accounts first, then our cost to goods sold account, and then in the bottom our expense account. So it's almost kind of like a trial balance. So it's pretty good. All right, and then, okay, so that's so far. Then what I'll do is I'm also gonna, let me X out of that. Let's go into columns and let's turn on the sales rep column. And some transactions are going to have a sales rep and some are not. So we're going to expand this. Okay, we'll go here to the right side. You're going to see some will have it. Okay, see, there you go. Some have it, some don't. So I'm going to go into filter and go add one more filter. And let's do sales rep. And then we'll do it's not empty. That way it's only showing me essentially, let's collapse this. Is only showing me the transactions that contain a sales rep. So if I collapse this, then I kind of get almost like a trial balance. So I get my, my income accounts here, which are mostly credits. And then I have my, ex my cost of goods sold and my expenses, which are mostly debits. So I do kind of sort of get kind of a profit and loss here. And then I can filter it by a particular uh, rep. So I go into filter, add one more filter. Actually, we'll pick the same filter sales rep. Let's do equals, and then I will do Hector. So then there's my report, right? I got sales for Hector and purchases. Let's change this to John, take Hector out. And there's my credits and my debits. So in this one, I'm losing money, of course. And let's do uh, Mary. And then there's my credits and then my debits. Okay, so it's not the same. Again, not the same as a profit and loss, but it's the closest thing we have to this and because you know we have QuickBooks Online Plus in this particular scenario, I can't build any more really fancy custom reports. So this is what we're gonna have. So I hope you enjoyed the video. 
See you in the next one.